Welcome, class. Are you going through some changes? Well, Nancy Schlossberg's transition theory can help you work those out. Before we get into the depths of Nancy K. Schlossberg's theory, we wanted to introduce you to her. Nancy is an author, speaker, motivator, and life transition guru. Prior to taking on the heavy task of assessing adult transitions, Schlossberg attended Barnard College as well as Teachers College at Columbia University where she earned her doctorate in counseling. Her higher education professional history includes being a professor emerita at the, in the Department of Counseling and Personnel Services for the College of Education at the University of Maryland. She previously served on the faculties of Wayne State University, Howard University, and Pratt Institute. Currently, she is retired and splitting her time between Washington, D.C. and Sarasota, Florida. However, her retirement has not led to a full stop in her career focus. She is still writing books on transitions, including two books about her retirement experience, giving lectures, and running workshops on managing change. So the origins of the theory are rooted in a personal crisis that she experienced when she followed her husband, who is a prominent labor lawyer, in a career move from Washington, D.C. to Detroit, Michigan. This was in 1963, a time of great political unrest, and at the apex of the civil rights movement. The photo shown here is from Detroit's Walk to Freedom, which took place on June 23, 1963, just two months before the March on Washington. And this was, in fact, the first time that Dr. King delivered his great I Have a Dream speech. For Schlossberg, this transition was unexpectedly difficult. And in fact, when recalling this move in a recent interview, she said that, quote, I thought my life was over. So it was really in her working through this difficult transition and in trying to understand how to make it easier for herself that the seeds of her theory were born. Her first study involved 600 male undergraduate students at Wayne State University, all over 35 years old, non-traditional adult learners. She wanted to better understand how they managed their transitions in adjusting to college. Schlossberg believed a need existed to develop a framework that would facilitate an understanding of adults in transition and aid them in connecting to the help they needed to cope with the ordinary and extraordinary process of living. Schlossberg aspired to look beyond adults' reactions to change and take her study an extra step further to also examine coping and support for the changes adults experience. Schlossberg's influences were Daniel J. Levinson, who focused on comprehensive adult development theory, Bernice Newgarten, who focused on the interaction of aging and personality, and Lowenthal and Chiraboga, who focused on social stress and adaption. Schlossberg's theory has undergone numerous revisions since its basic tenets were originally published in her 1981 article, A Model for Analyzing Human Adaption to Transition, that was originally published in The Counseling Psychologist. You'll see on this slide the timeline for different publications on the adult transition theory. Some of Schlossberg's studies associated with the theory involve a study on adult men who lost their jobs at NASA to understand the impact of a support program, a study on couples dealing with geographic relocation, which reinforced the concept of positive and negative aspects of a transition, and a study of university clerical workers' coping strategies. In fact, one of the strengths of her theory is how many times it has been revised to incorporate social and cultural changes, but would you expect anything else from someone whose life's work has been focusing on change? So this slide shows an overview of the theory, which is predicated upon a definition of transition as an event or non-event that results in changed relationships, routines, assumptions, and roles. So pretty much anything that can happen to you in life. Transitions can be anticipated or known about ahead of time. For instance, a student moving home from home to college is an anticipated transition. They can also be unanticipated or not known about ahead of time. For example, a college student may experience an unanticipated bout of homesickness during her first semester at college or find that she doesn't get along with her roommate. 
Finally, transitions can be categorized as non-events, or things that are expected to happen but do not. An example of this is a student who is not accepted into their first college choice, or who applies for a student or athletic club but is not accepted. Coping with transitions involves a process of moving in, moving through, and moving out. An individual's ability to cope or to move through the transition depends upon a unique mixture of resources, both assets and liabilities, that are, that are available to that person. These are known as the four S's. One really important point of this theory is the centrality of self-perception, meaning that a transition is only afforded significance if the individual experiencing it sees it as important or significant. So in other words, not every person will react to the same transition in the same way. And furthermore, the coping mechanisms for transitions can be entirely different depending upon that person's perceptions of the event and the resources available to him or her. As we mentioned previously, Schlossberg's theory went through different developments. The four S's came about after Schlossberg modified her theory's transition process to consist of three components, approaching change, taking stock, and taking charge. The four S's, which you'll see defined on this slide, demonstrate the taking stock section of the transition process. Taking stock can also be defined as assessing coping resources. It's also important to note that the four S's take into account both positive and negative assets the person going through the transition may or may not have. The four S's can be used in higher education to help students evaluate a transition. If a student is encouraged to reflect on how they see the transition, who they are, or how they react to change, what their support network is, and what they can do to adjust to the transition, you can work with the student to assist in the development of a solution. Schlossberg and her colleagues integrated the adult transition model with Cormier and Hackney's counseling model to provide a guideline for actions that can be taken to support adults going through a transition. The integrated theory is called the Helping Models Framework. The five stages of the Helping Models Framework are relationship building. The helper should use basic listening skills when working with the person going through a transition. The second stage is assessment. Areas to assess include the individual's environment or situation, inter internal resources or self, external resources or support, and current coping skills or strategies. As you can see, all of those relate to the four S's that we previously mentioned. The third stage is goal setting. Individuals can set goals related to each of the four S's. For example, modifying the environment would affect their situation, Regaining a sense of balance would affect their self, increasing support would affect support, and developing an action plan would affect strategies. The fourth stage is interventions, reframing the individual's interpretation of the meaning of the situation. For example, doing an assets assessment would be an intervention on the self, referral to a support group would affect their support, and generating problem-solving strategies. The fifth stage is termination and follow-up. The helper can aid in reviewing what has happened and they can start to plan the next step with the person going through the transition. So you, as you can see, Schlossberg's conceptual framework is highly understandable and translatable to a wide variety of settings. However, as with any theory, there are both strengths and weaknesses to it. So some of the strengths include that the theory is easily linked to student learning outcomes. For example, the, the theory, although originally intended and developed for adults in transition, its framework and principles can be adapted to undergraduate students. The theory also integrates personal variances, and it relies heavily upon self-perception, self-reflection, and one's ownership of the issue and the solution. However, most of the research on the theory has been conducted outside of higher education. Additional research should be done to determine the applicability of the theory to different student populations, including first generation, low SES, GLBTQ communities, and different ethnicities. In addition, the complexity of the model and the number of variances allowable within the theory 
make comprehensive formal assessment efforts difficult. However, the potential of the theory in helping us to understand student populations and the different levers for effective transitioning makes this research important, especially as it relates to our understanding of and support for diverse student populations. Take that test. to change your health. It's gonna have to be